everyone and welcome back. It is time for my March reading wrap up. I have missed some reading wrap ups. I'm just looking at my notes and I've started some things and then just not done things. So this is an attempt to get back into the normal YouTubing rhythm. So it is time for a monthly wrap up because that's what happens at the end of the month. March was a pretty good reading month. I read eight books. One of those was a giant book and three of those were SPFBO finalists who will all be getting their videos which will be coming up, I just need to get them worked on, which means I have one finalist left, um, I will be doing that one very soon because SPFBO 9 finishes at the end of April so clearly I need to get that one done. So I shall just go through in the order I read them. So the first book I finished in March was The Strange by Nathan Ballingrud. Annabelle Crisp is 14 when the silence comes, severing all contact between Earth and her new home on Mars. One night, her and her father are robbed at gunpoint. Among the items taken is a recording of her absent mother's voice. Driven by a righteous fury, Annabelle sets out to confront the thieves, taking her across Mars. So this one is definitely a nod to Ray Bradbury's Mars and I loved the atmosphere that created. There's this undercurrent running through. Um, the Strange is actually something they mine on Mars and the effects of it just creates this weirdness that is apparent very early on and it's an interesting mystery. This was really absorbing and pretty fast paced. Annabelle could be a touch unpleasant at uh, times. She's belligerent and quite manipulative, definitely wanting to get her own way, but I really enjoyed how her character progressed throughout this one. I gave this three out of five. The next book I read was I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Harpman, and this is translated from French by Ros Schwartz. 39 women are imprisoned underground in a cage. Watched over by guards, they have no notion of time, no memory of how they got there, and only vague recollections of their lives before. As the burn of the electric lights merge day into night, a young woman, the 40th prisoner, sits alone and outcast in the corner. But soon she will show herself to be the key to their escape and survival in the strange world that awaits them above. This book fucking destroyed me. Um, I don't quite know what I anticipated, but it wasn't the most beautifully written examination of what it means to be human when everything around you has been stripped away. Brutal and unforgiving, no answers, only existential pain. I feel this pairs very well with The Road. Um, when I was reading this, all I could think was, these books belong together. I would be very surprised if this is not very near the top of my favourites list by the end of the year. I gave this one a 5 out of 5. Changing the tone slightly, I then read Moving Pictures by Terry Pratchett. Alchemists have always thought that they can change reality and shape it to their own purposes. Imagine the damage that could be wrought on Discworld if they managed to get their hands on the ultimate alchemy. Motion pictures, the greatest of all illusions. It may be a triumph of universe-shaking proportions. It's either that or they're about to unlock the dark secret of the Hollywood Hills by mistake. So this is the 10th Discworld book and Terry Pratchett was definitely in the swing of things by this point because everything was created so effortlessly from the characters and locations that we have already seen to everything that's new in this book. This was a lot of fun and definitely the tone shift I needed from the previous book. And this one really looks at basically being swept up in the magic of motion pictures and how it may not be the most honest thing on the planet. I had a lot of fun with this one, I gave it 4 out of 5. And then I read the biggest book I have read so far this year and that is The Light of All That Falls by James Islington. And this is the third and final book in the Lycanius trilogy. Oh, I have some mixed feelings about this one. Um, it took some getting through. This is over 800 pages and this first half was a slog. Uh, there's a lot of politics, a lot of discussion of who's betrayed who, who's been plotting against who for years, and then when characters appear we talk to the characters and let them know what we have learned since the last time we have seen them. Things really did start moving in the second half as our characters started to come back together and all the plot points that had been laid started to come together. Um, 
surprisingly emotional ending but I think they did a really good job of dealing with all the time travel stuff and all the things that needed resolving but it took so much getting through this is a beast I gave it four out of five and then the final book I read was At the Gates and Other Stories by Patrick Samphire. This is a self-published book. It is a hardcover. Um, I read two of his novellas at the end of last year and then had this on my wish list and it was really ridiculously cheap on Amazon for a very brief time. So, of course, I had to get it. This is a collection of 16 short stories and it is steeped in melancholy. There is definitely a feeling throughout of what has been missed and a lot of his stories deal with magic being hidden in our world. There are only a few stories where they don't take place on our world but I, I really liked how everything was done with all the different magics throughout this one and where they were and what was going on with them. As usual with short story collections, some stories I really loved, some stories I didn't. I enjoyed the writing and I'm really looking forward to trying more from this author. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. So those are the books that I read in March. I would love to know what you have read this month. Thanks for watching and I shall see you all soon.